Welcome to MMA FanCast. My name is Luke Pace, and welcome back to everyone who's already a subscriber to the YouTube channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe so you can see more great interviews, including the one coming at you right now with uh, Tyler Fleming, who just made, we're under 20, yeah, we're under 24 hours removed, basically right around a day removed from when you made your debut. Tyler Fleming, welcome back to the show. You represented Stout Pittsburgh at Braunlenburg 20 for 247 fighting championships yesterday. Got a big win in your debut against another debut fighter. So welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Great having you. It was nice because I got to have you on uh, before your fight. So we'll kind of jump into it uh, pre-fight, round by round, and then overall. So pre-fight, what was it like uh, cutting weight, weighing in, warming up, walking to the cage, all the things before the fight? How'd that all go for you since it was all a new experience? So I uh, I listened to the exact instructions that my coaches gave me to a T and I had an easy cut. Uh, the week leading up to the fight was the least stressful week that I've had in years. All, all I did was go to work, drink my water, hit some pads, sit in the sauna, and the weight just came right off me day by day. Um, weighing in, finally coming down to like that, uh, coming down to when the, the cut is over, you know, I'm starting to get antsy. It took a little bit longer than, than I expected to, but, uh, it wasn't that bad and I got food immediately. So, you know, uh, overall the experience was, uh, seamless. And then walking out to the cage, uh, from getting there to walking out into the cage was really fun. Uh, the the vibe between me and my teammates was great. The locker room banter was great. The warm up was fantastic. Uh, everything was just so fun. And uh, what was it like? You mentioned the teammates, the warm up. Stout is always a big representative um, on on the card. You had multiple Stout fighters. Uh, what was that like as far as? Um, comfortability, having teammates, a lot of fighting for people that don't know, a lot of fighting is somewhat lonely because you can literally be the only fighter with your coaches in a warm up room where, you know, it's kind of not a, you know, not super friendly because nobody's really uh, knows you. But in your case with Stout, some of the other big gyms, you got multiple fighters on the same card. So before we get to the first round, how was it? You also had uh, Lucas Seaburn, obviously, uh, he's, he's a guy that I think is infectious, right? As far as his attitude and his confidence is in his encouragement. I'm hoping to get him on, on the show, obviously to talk about his incredible knockout win for his debut off a jumping knee, just incredible stuff. And then I'm looking down the list. Looks like, um, Max, Maximilian Jarrell, also stout. And then, uh, Joel. So out of the four on Three of you won, so that's kind of nice. You got a, you got Stout off to a good start. So, first round, breakdown first round for us. You were going up against, you're 28. We talked about it uh, uh, on your interview with me. You're 28. You were fighting an 18-year-old who certainly hats off to him for coming in ready to fight and certainly not somebody who looked like he didn't know what he was doing. I, I think Jaden Blake has, has a lot of potential training out of PA combat sports. Uh, so, what was that first round like for you? Uh, that first round was, uh, it was it was exhilarating in ways, but I also at the at the same time, it kind of just played out the the way that I, the way that I was hoping it would. I uh, I felt as though uh, going in, I wanted to, I wanted to establish. Uh, I wanted to establish my stand up in my striking and I was hoping that in doing so it would put him in a position where he didn't want to strike from the outside with me and he would close the distance, which is exactly what I got. And then I grabbed on to the first thing that he gave me, which was the clench. 
And I just held on to that for as long as I could. I heard your uh, corners specifically uh, like walking you through how to knee. I'm sure you've done it before, but in the clinch that you had against Jaden, kind of how to keep space to be able to keep throwing knees. So certainly it sounded like you guys had that game plan. Was it because you knew he came from a striking background? From what I know, he at least he talked like he was going to be comfortable striking. He certainly looked like he was handling his own striking. Um, I would say it's more because that's that's where I feel the most comfortable is striking. Oh, so that's gonna, gotcha. that's going to be that, that's going to be my 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 first my first step is I'm gonna I'm gonna th start throwing jabs and playing the range game. And I'm going to see how you react. Well, that makes per that makes perfect sense. So all all told, when the first round was over, you came into your corner. How were I know your coaches are extraordinary coaches. Uh, both of them are two time uh, coaches of the year, and Stout Pittsburgh is two time gym of the year. Two four seven awards has done two years now, which is really cool. I think, oh, you know, over time that's going to really become. Uh, quite an exciting aspect of regional MMA, uh, what 247 awards look like. But you came into your coaches, two of the best coaches in the game, obviously. What were your feelings uh, coming into that round? Did you feel good with what happened? Uh, did, were they getting mics, but known to, you know, kind of chew his fighters out in excitement and kind of that, to spur him on? He's not a sugar coater. How did you feel coming out of the first round? Uh, coming out of the first round, I, I felt good. I was a little anxious because I knew that there was something wrong with my eyebrow. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't sure, exactly sure uh, what caused it. I didn't think that it would have been th – that it was like an intentional strike. I figured that it was like an incidental uh, contact, uh, if anything. But uh, I just – the the eyebrow was the only thing that had me worried um points wise because i didn't i wasn't sure how the judges were gonna, were gonna see it so i just said to myself that i needed to make sure that i stayed on top of winning the exchanges come, uh, going into the second round uh, just in case it did get scored as damage uh but also uh getting to the corner uh my coaches they really are coaches of the year for for a reason because you know, it's first time, first time experience for me. I'm up here and I look to my corner and they're both all smiles. And it kind of brings me right back down to where I need to be. And, 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 it, and it brings me, it, it takes me from like the, the anxiety rising to bringing it right back down. And, I, and that's when I knew I was like, okay, this is, this is good. I just got to listen to what they have to say. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, particularly about um, damage. It is tricky. You know, we've watched fights at the highest level, UFC included, where um, an incidental headbutt or some other type of incidental content appears to end up getting scored as damage because the judges have a hard time sometimes if somebody's face, you know, is banged up, uh, which yours, because for people who don't know, Anything on the face bleeds, even if it's really not a serious cut, it, it just bleeds a lot. And then you get something mm -hmm. up over there. Um, I actually saw after the fight, uh, they had two ringside doctors. And after the fight, they were doing um, some stitching. Don't know if how if that's how you got stitched, but they had like a line of fighters. They were, you know, they were uh, stitching up and stuff. So, uh, but yours, your cut is kind of in the bad spot in the sense that it can bleed into the eye. And when I was interviewing you afterwards, somehow and i'm sure you might have felt a little bit but somehow you had a lot of blood around but your eye looked clear i was looking at you it didn't look it didn't look like you had a lot of like blood in the eye that was creating irritation or anything maybe i'm wrong was that happening uh actually i didn't notice blood getting into my eye at all the cut man did a really good job of stopping the bleeding and getting it closed up in, in between the rounds and I did a good job of uh, of not letting a bunch of strikes land and make it worse. That That's smart. Even what you said after the first round, that's very m more mature mindset, you know, factored in, okay, I've got, the, I've got something up here. You can tell something's going on and you kind of have a game plan. As a debut, that's a lot to kind of process because, you know, 
fights are real and there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving, moving parts. Uh, you don't get, you don't really get the time. Uh, you know, if, if you got hit like that in football and got a gash, they, they'd pull you out, fix it up and either not send you back in or send you back in once you're ready. But in fighting, that's not how it happened. So what was round two? What was round two like for you? Round two was fast. Uh, it started off fast, but um, it it started off fast and it ended fast. And I felt like it was just round 1.2, mm-hmm. you know, it, I felt like it, 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 it was a repeat of the first round. Uh, I think I allowed, I allowed a couple more, a couple more strikes from the outside to land uh, in our, in, in our initial engagement. But then I secure, I secured the, the clinch and it was just, I, I knew what to do from that point. I, I just knew I needed to keep landing the knees, keep control of his head, and uh, make sure my back was not on the cage. Well, again, that sounds like great coaching, great mindset of, of kind of game planning as as you're in there, which I think goes a long way. Um, How did you feel coming out of round two? Round two, uh, I, definitely, I definitely felt – uh, I definitely felt more tired than I was in round one. I knew that uh, by 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 round two, I I knew that I was working hard, but I felt really good because I I knew that I round I, I won that round as well. And then what about round three? Because I think you got you got the decision twenty uh thirty to twenty seven, correct? Yes, I did. So for for that that means. Judges saw you. Was it? Was it uh, all thirty twenty seven? I think there might there was like one twenty nine twenty eight in there, right? There was a twenty nine twenty eight, and then thirty twenty seven, thirty twenty seven, thirty twenty seven. Okay, so probably the first round would be my guess that somebody made one judge. But again, uh, you know, you you won uh, three times three. Ah, uh, look, that's nine rounds. So ba- if you count the judges scoring separately, so you got eight out of nine rounds if you add the judges up separately. And sometimes judges have different criteria. It can be tricky. And also for people that don't know, judges sit on three different sides of the cages. If you, they actually rotate around, they don't have the same view every night because in MMA, yeah, in MMA particular, they like get up and, and rotate and they're on opposite. They're not like, sometimes people think they're like, I actually thought this before I started getting around MMA. You think they're on one like one table, all like shoulder to shoulder, shoulder. They're not at all. They're they're completely separated. One, so they can't kind of you know uh, collude with each other. But also, yeah. So they also get different views. And in MMA, probably more than anything else, that does make a big difference because if somebody's up against the cage, it, you know, you can really lose track. So sometimes that leads to a slight difference. But overall, um, you know, you won unanimously, regardless, and very dominantly all. Three rounds. And from what I remember uh, watching it and being excited, anytime it's a debut versus debut, uh, it's a learning experience right in front of your eyes. I felt like Jaden, uh, hats off to him, obviously looked the best in the first round, um, you know, and then from there, you really took over. So I thought a 30 27 made sense, but that's why I'm so glad I don't, I don't make the judging. So a 29 28 also works in the sense that, you know, you mentioned rounds going quickly, two minute rounds. I always told fighters when I was coaching and it was novice amateur rules, you got to think in like 30 seconds because two, you know, two minutes is just four 30 seconds. Um, Mm -hmm. And and that goes really, that goes really quick. I mean, just holding up against the cage, that could be 30 seconds. That might be a whole half of a round. Who knows? You know, so you kind of have to, it can be tricky sometimes and you won the fight. What did it feel like the end of the third round, Fight's over. I'm assuming your coaches told you that you won. But what did it feel like in that time between the end of your first fight and the announcement? Um, it felt really quiet. Oddly, uh, I didn't. I, I couldn't really hear anything. I was just waiting to hear to, to hear the the announcers over the PA. Uh, it, it's almost like the world melted away, and I couldn't see anything past the cage. And uh, I I knew that 
I was ninety percent certain that 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 I won the fight. I, I figured that there was the that if I didn't win the fight, win the fight, that I was getting robbed. Um, and I was confident that, that 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 wasn't the that wasn't the case. But I'm sure that it's uh, I'm sure that it's hard for anyone, uh, especially in their first fight, to be one hundred percent confident. You know what I mean? There's sure. a there's a that, that, that I I always carry a little bit of a a little a little bit of doubt in my pocket with me. Uh, even even in my regular life, like I know I did everything right, but what's the sometimes the worst thing does happen. Yeah, you know what I mean? True. And that's you know, in particularly in life in general, you can only control the controllable. Like there are times where you do everything that's within your control and things don't go well. And I think even though that's why the um serenity prayer starts out with acceptance, right? Because what when you've done everything that you can control, then even if it's a terrible outcome, you have to accept that, well, there was nothing else I could do differently since I mentioned the serenity prayer. And it's a, it's a good mindset to have, even without recovery being in play, is the mindset that, well, you know what? A lot of times when terrible outcomes happen, there are things we can learn from it. There are things we could do. There are things we could do differently. And so, therefore, you know, that that's that balance. But, um, and actually, I just re-looked at my notes. Uh, like I said, Stout was three and one on the night. And that one loss was a split decision. So um, I guess that goes to goes to show. Although that fight, I felt like was a split decision either way it went. I actually said that on the broadcast. So to me, my prediction was it was going to be a split decision. I didn't make a pick on who won. I just think there's certain fights, particularly three two-minute rounds that go by so quickly. There's certain fights that just kind of are sort of split decision-esque. And obviously, I'm sure Jao Al will be back better next time. So. That was a very competitive fight. It, it was. It, I, I loved watching that. It was a better fight, and there are times, and and, and I know some some coaches and, and some people might not agree with this. I think there are times that a moral victory does matter, and so losing sucks. Losing by split decision can both suck more because it's like you were so close to winning, but it can also suck a little less and feeling like, well, at least one judge saw you know saw what I was doing. So, you know, nobody likes split decisions. But I think there are times where it's at least like, well, you, you know, Martinez at least knows that he's he's putting it together, right? It was a competitive fight. He's putting it together and all that. So to you, what's the mean as we wrap up, Tyler? You're, you're now uh, an undefeated 1-0 amateur MMA fighter. But what's the main takeaway from you from training, from getting into shape, from transitioning into MMA, from learning it to taking your first fight? What's the main takeaway from this whole experience? And then – what do you plan on doing in the future MMA wise? My main takeaway from this whole experience leading up to this first fight. If, if you're obsessed with something and you really, really need it, you'll get it done. Mm. That makes sense. That focus, focus goes a long way with, with what you're doing in life. People call it obsession. Sure. You call it obsession. I think uh, that, that focus, a lot of people don't realize how much, even in my own life, how much focus can make a difference. So makes a lot of sense. What do you want to, what do you want to do next? I know 247 has announced that April 20th, which is a couple months away at this point, a little under two months away, uh, will be a big double header at the casino at the Hollywood casino at the Meadows. Is that something you want to consider? I'm guessing you got a medical suspension. When people hear the word suspension, they, they think you're like back in school and you're in trouble, but medical suspensions often are, are about fighter safety, you know, and considering you have stitches and I know a lot of fighters, you know, uh, I don't know if that's feasible, but in your mindset, what would you like your turnaround time to be? Um, or is it just kind of keep training and you'll figure out when you're back in the cage? Uh, I'm in, I'm in no hurry. Not that, not that I don't want to take another fight, but I also know there are, there are a few very specific things that I would like to revisit and I would like to hone them and I don't want to rush that process. So, uh, even if, even if it's not until December before I start thinking about my next fight, I'm I'm okay with that as long as I as as long as I uh, work on my goals. 
and get better in the meantime. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. That's another mature mindset. I can't wait to have you back on uh, this show to talk about whenever your next fight is to do a preview of that fight. Thanks so much for coming on the show just a day after your big fight. And of course, congratulations to you and all the winners. I mean, last night, for people that weren't there, it was lit the definition of a standing room only. There were times that Drew Shannon, the the uh, MC, the uh, ring announcer, had to tell people to get out of the aisles and clear away because people couldn't see him. And it was literally that. It was literally that full. So, uh, and uh, that that is kind of special, I think. But 13, 13 fights, 13 winners. Hats off to all the winners. Um, it was it was very it was an absolutely incredible night, and uh, obviously we already said your your buddy and teammate Lucas Siebert had about a per, about as good and as perfect of a pro debut as as one could hope. So uh, and of course that's kind of fun because they were the co-main event and you were the the first fight of the night. So uh, from beginning to almost the very end, Stout Pittsburgh was there, and that's what's kind of cool about. Uh, you know, how busy, and I know, uh, I think Coach Mike Wilkins was telling me that Stout had been, am I right, they'd been in an LFA fight, I believe? Yeah, they had been Yeah, they, they drove down from Niagara like 12 hours before our fight. Yeah, he was telling me that. I've known Mike a long time, and we were talking, it might have been after your fight, we are talking in the cage after one of the Stout fights, because there's that break between the fight being over and the decision being read, and, and uh, he, he mentioned the LFA fight and how they were someplace else. I didn't get where. Makes sense. Niagara, I know LFA oftentimes is, is over in, in Canada. So, wow. What, what dedication there, but also that, that really shows. And I know the, the gentleman that they, that they coached is doing incredibly well, too. It's not a fighter I've, I've heard of yet. Somebody I want to get on the show because I think he's 3-0 or 4-0 as a pro. So, very exciting stuff. Well, thanks so much, Tyler, for coming back on the show. You, you heal up, and I can't wait to hear what's next for you. You've been listening to Luke Basin from MMA Fancast with special guest, Tyler Fleming. Tyler, thanks so much. Thank you. You got it.